<clears throat> the views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Well then, <sighs> thank you for that big cough, my son. Let's talk about books. You see, people books, always books say, can "Yes, make Maxwell? you learn." Yes, books can make you learn. That is true. Mhm. Yeah. That's what I learned. Oh, you learned that books can make you learn. That's good. Yeah, my brain told me it. Your brain told you it. Good. You see, people always say, "Hey." Write what you know. And what I know is that I have been a loyal and, as far as they know, hardworking employee at my local bookstore for well over 16 years, which is amazing. <laughs> my inner bookseller can drive and almost buy cigarettes. Yes. And as such, I really do have my dirty fingers on the pulse of the book world. And I am here to thrust my dirty fingers in your mouth with this week's installments of Notes from the Bookstore. Dun, dun, dun. And it's been a quiet week here in Lake Wobegon, my hometown, out at the edge of the prairie. Yes. Old man Jeffers was in town. He lives a, 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 a sad widower's life in his tiny house over on Lakewood and Pine. Yeah. Right next to the courthouse. Old man Jeffers was uh, uh, once again caught jacking it at the Moonlight All Night Diner. Yes. He lives a sad widower's life. And one thing that brings him pleasure is going to the Moonlight All Night Diner, taking down his pants and just furiously masturbating. As you do. As you do, most of the people in Lake Wobegon have gotten used to old man Jeffers furiously masturbating at the diner. But we had some tourists into Lake Wobegon. Maxwell, could you not play that baby's piano while I'm trying to podcast, please? If you could stop doing that, I would appreciate it. We had some tourists into town, and the tourists weren't used to old man Jeffers, and well... The police were called, and on account of old man Jeffers being an unarmed black man, he was shot to death by the wonderfully quaint Lake Wobegon police force. Mm. The wake was held a few days later at the rec hall of the local Presbyterian church in town, where coffee and bars and gossip were served and enjoyed by all. Yes. Then wouldn't you know it, the most remarkable thing happened at that wake. Probably the most amazing thing to ever happen in town since the Sullivan twins did their tap dance routine at the Presbyterian talent show and bake sale last spring. They, they were good. They were they very were good. good. Father Smithfield was saying a few words about old man Jeffers when suddenly the great old ones appeared. <laughs> tall and sleek and menacing the lot of them. And after some strange grunts and screeches in an ancient language that no one understood, there suddenly appeared right there in the Presbyterian wreck hall the great beast Cthulhu. Yes. All at once engulfed Father Smithfield and a dainty arrangement of begonias that was given by the ladies of the Lake Wobegon Knitting Circle, who all loved Old Man Jeffers on account of the well-known fact well known around town that despite the median age of the members of the Lake Wobegon Knitting Circle hovering around 97 years of age, mm -hmm. old man Jeffers was boffing every last member of that knitting circle. Uh huh. Great vigor. <laughs> anyway, Cthulhu turned out to be a very personable fellow despite devouring Father Smithfield. Cthulhu stayed at the wake and enjoyed coffee and bars and gossip with the rest of us. Really, really nice guy. That I, I've heard that. I, I looked up to see how you pronounce it and found that there's about 35 different ways to pronounce. Yes. Chitulu. How do you pronounce it, Maxwell? I pronounce it cow cow. Cow cow. Yeah, cow cow. I mean, no, cocoa. Oh, cocoa. Coco the Junkie Pimp. 
And that's the news from Lake Wobegon, where all the women are tall and all the men are bow-legging on and all the children have scurvy. But just one last word about old man Jeffers. Because it's it's very sad, his passing. Um, but we all saw it coming. You know, every now and then, just the impression of him being the old widower. I would always leave... I, I Not always. It was an occasional thing, you know. But I would leave some cookies on his front porch. Oh, well, that's, that's, that's nice. And I always that's made nice. sure that the cookies were wrapped in tissues as kind of my way of saying, I understand. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I like that. In other news, it's summer now, Bunny. It's officially summer. And summer yes. means one thing in the world of retail. Yes. The summer stench is back again. <laughs> the summer stench hath returned to wreak almighty havoc on your nasal passage, my friend. Every customer a different smell. Yes. It's like Harry Potter's Bernie Bot's Every Flavor Beans, but instead of wizarding jelly babies, it's redneck stinky freaking armpits and stale cheap cigarettes <laughs> and dirty neck sweat and oh so much sunscreen. Mm -hmm. One third of the population smells like coconuts now, and it's weird. <laughs> By August, the mere sight of coconuts will make your stomach do the frickin' Macarena. It's the summer stench, buddy. The yes. summer stench. Everyone must fear it. Yes. Disturbing. Getting back to book news. Really mm -hmm. excited to be talking about this. Author Michael Crichton oh. has a a new book out. This is true. It's set in the Wild West, and it's an amazing book. It's an amazing book for two reasons. Number one, Michael Crichton does such a great job of painting a picture in your head. You know, Michael Crichton is, is such a vivid author. He paints such a colorful, believable world in your mind. You can picture the, the Wild West town, and you can picture the expanding prairies and the desolate mountains that stretch on until forever because michael Crichton's just an amazing author and also i think you're talking about tolkien no 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 i'm talking about michael Crichton. he's an amazing author and also another amazing thing about his new book is the fact that he's been hella dead for about a decade nice he's been dead well, that's for I think dedication now well, it's obvious to me, and I think to all forward-thinking individuals out there with their minds fully woke, like mine, yeah, that hella dead author Michael Crichton is in fact alive and living in the same deserted island as Elvis, Tupac, Andy Kaufman, Sean Spicer Smile, and of course, Kellyanne Conway's soul. <laughs> so good for you, Michael Crichton. Good for you. Have you Good. noticed have you noticed how how utterly haggard and completely valumed out Kellyanne Conway looks whenever she appears anywhere now? Yeah, no, she looks pretty she looks pretty zonked. She used to be pretty on the perky side. Yeah. I wouldn't say full blown perk. But definitely on the upside. The thing that really blows my mind about Kellyanne Conway is the fact that at first she was the spokesperson, like the figurehead, for Ted Cruz when he was running for president and yeah. would constantly be on the news attacking Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And no one either remembers or wants to talk about it that she was paid good money to attack Donald Trump, yes. and now she's being paid good money to uh, speak for Donald Trump. But you can't believe anything she said, because literally she was just saying the opposite a year ago. Mm -hmm. You know? Yes. It's weird. This it's is, just weird. This is true. And, and, and after all that, it didn't stop Ted Cruz for phone banking for Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird. Are you fucking... He said your father killed Kennedy and yeah. was the Zodiac killer. Yeah. Are you... <laughs> okay. 
yeah, it's it's ridiculous. I I, w- I would not let that shit die. I would I would remember I would remind the world of that every day if I was Ted Cruz. Yeah, yeah. And it really I I like already remind. Like the, huh? It really did seem like he m- might be the last surviving Republican to say no to mm-hmm. Donald Trump. Yeah. But then at the last second, he's like. I am Ted Cruz. I'm calling on behalf of Donald Trump. Yes, it's the Ted Cruz. I finally just gave up. Yeah, it's it, it, it's it's uh, we're trying to keep this clean, so I'm not going to say that. I know. I know. <laughs> and finally, this week, in an effort to seem young and hip and with it, with yes. finger quotes, your local bookstore would like to announce that yes. We do have a limited amount of fidget cubes and fidget spinners in stock. Yes. And look, we're not necessarily proud to have these fidget cubes and fidget spinners. So if you can not make a big deal about the fact that your local bookstore has fidget cubes and fidget spinners, then that would be awesome. Okay? Yes. We're not proud to have caved in to the latest trend. But let me tell you something. We're doing it for a purpose. We're doing it for a purpose, not a porpoise. We're doing it for a purpose. Yes. It's all a concentrated effort on the part of your local bookstore to try and look cool for once. We've, we've never been the cool store. Mm-hmm. You know, you see the suits up in corporate. They've been doing, for the last year, they've been doing a bunch of focus groups and polls and surveys and I don't know, screaming in an attempt to try and find out what our core demographic is, you know? Yeah. Like what is the typical customer who comes into your local bookstore? Who what's the, what's the typical age? What are they into? So after, uh, apparently after all of the votes were tallied or whatever the heck it is that you do in a focus group, All of the available data that was collected suggests that our average customer, our average, regular, normal, everyday customer Uh is a 69-year-old grandmother from Boise who has hip problems and wants to speak to the manager. (laughs) That is our average customer. Our average customer (laughs) is a 69-year-old grandmother from Boise with hip dysplasia and bifocals, who remembers a simpler time when it was okay for your kids to be walking down the streets at night. Yeah. That's our average customer. And I'd like to take one of our trademark, the Pope on Films asides here. Despite what old people want you to believe, (laughs) it is never okay to let your kids walk on the streets at night. (laughs) I don't know why... So many old people. I remember when your kids could just walk down the street at night. Dad, can I wander through oncoming traffic at 1 a.m.? Sure, son. It's the 50s. Okay. Keep it in perspective. Keep it in perspective. It was the 50s, and birth control was not widely available yet. That's a good point. You didn't mind losing a couple. You yeah. Know? Yeah. That's why that's, that's why you don't that's why you don't really start getting very attached to them. So they get around mm, eight, nine, ten, somewhere in there. Depend you know. Yeah. Ten if you got a stupid kid. You know. Yeah. But yeah. you know, I, when do you you know, that's when a father and son start playing catch a a very bonding and defining moment in a child's life you know so that's basically it you wait until they get eight nine ten you see that they're you're not getting rid of them anywhere they haven't died on the playground you know they haven't taken off a finger on the rusty swing yeah you know uh, they didn't crack their heads on the pavement on a bicycle, you know. They're a survivor, and you could start showing them a little affection. Yeah. So our our company 
it's trying to appeal to hip young millennials. Yes. In the hopes of wrangling a younger demographic. And as a result of that, a lot of ideas are being batted about. The, the hot topic like, of bookstores. <laughs> yeah, like, like we're just trying to be cool. We've never been cool. So we're trying to be cool. And we're trying to think of ways to try and get the a younger core demographic into our store that aren't 69-year-old grandmothers. Yeah. So, so a, a lot of ideas are out there. For example... If a young person wants to use an electrical outlet to charge your phone or a laptop, we are trying not to chant shame, shame, and then tase them. Ah, that's good. That's that's going to be hard. Maybe that's you can, what our policy is right now. Maybe you could just wean yourself off and just like not tase them, but keep the shame, shame part for a while. Yeah, it's it's going to be weird because when you go into your local bookstore, the first thing you notice is the smell of rotten fruit because we keep big, big buckets of rotten fruit to pelt at people who dare to use an electrical outlet. <laughs> that's just that's just what we've done for years, yeah. you know. Now here's an idea of mine that I hope that the suits pick up. Okay. Yes. If we want to appeal to a younger demographic. We change the dress code. All the employees wear backwards baseball caps and carry skateboards. <laughs> and instead of saying, hi, how can I help you today? What brought you in today? What are you, who are you shopping for? We just walk up and say, hello, fellow young people. Who's got some Molly? You, know? <laughs> you, you, don't, you don't go the full route and say something like, Sup, bra. No, 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 no. I I don't say that because I'm I'm usually with all the other teens smoking behind the quad. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's usually what I'm doing. I'm smoking behind the quad. It's just an idea that <laughs> I have. Here's another idea of mine. Okay. Yeah. If that doesn't work, and I think this idea is great. Okay. So if the whole appealing to young people thing doesn't work out, then what we do is we turn it around and we do the opposite. What if we can't, if we can't cater to young people, then what we need to do is start catering solely to 69 year old grandmothers from Boise. Oh, how you might ask. This is my idea. Here's a couple of ideas. Uh huh. Number one, we only play Tom Jones and Neil Diamond music in the store. Yes. Nothing but uh, a Sweet Caroline and What's New Pussycat, just on a loop. Mm. Number two, we only carry books about how cute grandchildren are. Mm hmm. And this one's my favorite. Number three, my favorite idea. Everyone in the store becomes a different soap opera character. Yes. And we oh, have to, yes, like dinner theater to, in a bookstore. Yeah, and you have to keep coming into the store to see what's happening. I will be Patch. I'm a drifter with a secret. Then there's my <laughs> evil twin, Morgan. Or am I the evil twin? Hmm. <laughs> you got to keep coming to the bookstore to find out what my deal is. Yes. Yeah. And you can be in the middle of helping an elderly lady. And one of your coworkers can walk up to you abruptly, slap you in the face, and say, "You bastard!" And storm off. And then she off. goes, and then she goes to hit me again, but I grab her wrist. Yes. <laughs> and I go, "You're not trying that on me again." I remember what happened in Paris. The baby wasn't yours. <clears throat> yeah. We'll also keep the store freezing on account of all the hot flashes. Ah. So that's that's my idea. I think it's really going to work. We're either going to appeal if, to young people like crazy, or we're going to start appealing to seventy-year-olds. Either way, it's win-win. It, but if you get all of your old ladies collected, okay, and you'd need kind of a lot of them, I understand, and you carefully sequence their hot flashes, it would be like that Siber Trans-Siberian Orchestra thing they do at Christmas oh, time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good thinking. Mm -hmm. And again, 
you can harness that power and sell it back to the electricity for the electricity. So yet another green solution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, and and that is it from notes from the bookstore this week. This week we got a short one, but remember, boys and girls and David Bowie's out there. You too can save 10% on all of your purchases. And all you have to do is promise us that the spawn of the chosen one shall die before the machine becomes operational. <laughs> but we also send you some really nice coupons that go yes. straight to your spam folder. So, so that's fun. Yes. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> <laughs>